Hello and welcome to another episode of Glaswegian Geeks. Today we are doing something a little bit different from our usual movie reviews. We're kind of focusing on one minor cog in the bigger grand scheme of things, James. The grand design, as Brainiac would say. Yes, the grand design of the Batman animated series. One of the best animated series of all time. Hands I'm saying down. that now as a 22-year-old man. And I'm saying that as a 30-year-old man. You were what? I know. I was what? I had the toys for this show. Who didn't? Isn't that amazing? Uh, I had them, naturally, because uh, my parents loved me. Um, <laughs> so, obviously, I was a spoiled child. Uh, a spoiled brat. Yeah, a spoiled brat, yes. Mm, I have monocle and everything. <laughs> yeah, I'm a good child. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, we're talking about Heart of Ice, which is a Mr. Freeze story. Yes, the indeed. The first of Mr. Freeze's stories. For anyone who doesn't know Heart of Ice, it's probably one of the saddest tales ever told when it comes to a villain origin story. You know, you have your villains like the Joker, who is just a madman, and then you've got Two-Face, whose story is also quite tragic, but Freeze is... He's it's a, a ca- proper heartbreak. Yeah, because anyone could sympathise with him, anyone could level with him, and this... This episode, I mean, I was w- I watched it first when I was like just a kid. I remember just sitting there like in actual bits watching this because it was so sad. Yeah, this is by far one of the greatest animated episodes of any show. I don't care. Like this, I would gladly say if they were to do it as a full length feature film. Fuck you, Batman and Robin as a proper movie. This would honestly like bring people to tears. Yeah, because it's um like I I've said before in previous podcasts. A film is only as good as its villain. And when you have a villain who is bad, but bad for all the right reasons, that's when you've got something that's really, you know, that picks a question at an audience. You know, an audience has to sit and say to themselves, oh my God, why am I rooting for the hero? I should be rooting yeah. for the villain. You know, the villain, sometimes a good villain is somebody that's just a hero in another in another form. Yeah, like we were just discussing before we recorded the similarities between this and uh, Dolph Lundgren's Punisher. He went anti-hero, killing folk and well, folk, gangsters and whatever, and protecting innocents for all the right reasons because because he went through that. And Mister Freeze is bad, but he's doing it for the right reasons. Like, well, even then, the right reasons. Like, how f- how far do you go before you cross the line and go? Well, it's actually for the wrong reasons. Yeah, well, how he goes about it is obviously very wrong. He, he doesn't care who he hurts. He doesn't care who he kills. And again, that kind of that's an interesting morality that he's got because he was a scientist and he done things by the book. He wanted so desperately to cure his wife and when someone comes along and says well no you're not doing that anymore i'm not letting you what like, do you do what, what do you do like w- when you're faced with this person you know his wife who he loves dearly and he is told you're turning the machine off she is going to die would you go that step further to st- would you go against everything maybe that you believe in to protect them and that is that is freeze freeze is one of the most highly regarded Batman villains, but also kind of underrated on a level where people don't tend to touch him, people don't tend to use him his full effect, which we'll get into, obviously, a bit near the end, like, and things that he's appeared yeah. in. I just think, I think Freeze is a character who, I don't see him as a villain, I see him as just a human, then what a human would do, who was pushed to, to that point. He's one of my favourites, I think, I he's, he's very special. Anybody could relate to that, I think. We'll get right into the story of Heart of Ice, with Batman coming up against someone he's never faced he's freezing parts of Gotham trying to get pieces of technology and whatever to try and save his wife Uh, so it's a kind of a normal Batman story he's out patrolling at night and he's having to stop a break in but he comes up against Mr. Freeze who does have a couple of nice or should I say a couple of icy puns James Mm. oh yes no that's my army voice. Uh, Is it not the best thing you've ever Fuck you, heard? Batman and Robin. Oh, come on. It's amazing. Nope. Nope. I would kill the dinosaurs. The Ice Age. Uh, no. I, I just can't. I would rather jump out a window than watch that. As if Which <laughs> we might come to eventually down the line, but I'll deal with that problem at the time. <laughs> Uh, so with the story, Batman gets slightly frozen and Mr. Freeze actually accidentally hits 
one of his henchmen and instead of trying to spend time and assist him or take him back to his base he leaves him there which is a, a good comparison for Mr. Freeze's character he's got so much emotion for his wife but he's almost like reserved to the fact that the rest of the world can go fuck themselves yeah that, that's kind that, that's basically what he says in a nutshell he was the only person trying to cure his wife and to save his wife and realistically he doesn't care I mean like he says when you know the guy who's when the criminal whose legs he freezes like if Rosen and his pals are like oh we'll, we'll help you we'll, we'll, we'll get you out of here and he's like leave him he wasn't careful enough I do don't want to be next <laughs> you know it's like I don't have time for this you're, you're only going to stall me slow me down if you weren't good enough to get out of the way first time then they're just going to be a hindrance down the line so well that's it, it. That's, uh, that's very much his character he, he, he cares about one thing and it's not even himself it's his wife exactly and that, that's obviously you know if you break it down that's a man who's been pushed to the point of complete total disregard like he doesn't care about himself so he's not going to care about anyone else he's worked ever since he obviously knew that Nora his wife had this condition that he has done his very best to try and cure it and he can't yeah. that's, the, that's the sad thing about it he can't cure it I'm sure there's been some stories somewhere where he has and stuff like that but take it with this story and appearances where you know he has failed to do that that's the saddest thing about it he's working towards something that's never going to happen yeah. he's very much a character who has to let go so that he can live his life but he can't he's, he's got no life that's the thing that's that he's like, I would imagine outside of trying to rescue his wife there's there's nothing there for him ah, he doesn't go to the bingo or anything like that I don't <laughs> think I wouldn't imagine that he does like you know what I mean can you imagine maybe a wee casino night go to play some poker or something you know Dale, I'm off to the bingo two fat ladies 88 <laughs> oh what have we opened here the biggest can of army that you've ever seen <laughs> oh shit mate shit yeah so Batman gets frozen as well, but he happens to break out in... Because he's Batman. Yeah, of he's course. Batman, he's no super, explanation. Super strong, he's Batman. like, normal human abilities, you know? Why? Batman. Yeah, Alfred, like, gives him some chicken soup, because that's what you need after being frozen. Some chicken soup, James. Oh, yeah. The only cure for a cold, in Batman's words. It's just more of the same. We get a good, a good shot of Mr. Freeze's origins from Victor Freeze to Mr. Freeze and the whole backstory of Ferris, Ferris Boyle. Ferris Boyle. Ferris Boyle being an absolute cock end. Like I say, in a nutshell, you know, he's trying to cure his wife. Ferris Boyle's funding it. He finds out that he's funding it because apparently he didn't know he was funding it. And then he's like, I can do this because I've got money. Waves dick around. You know what I mean? That's what <laughs> Ferris Boyle does. And um, this whole story is a story of revenge. It's like Ferris Boyle made that monster very much like Weapon X made Wolverine. Yeah. Some stories where James Jonah Jameson made the scorpion. Yeah, so, it's very you true. Know, there's, there's, no. you know, you, yeah. you create something and that thing doesn't like it. Yeah. And when rebellion occurs, which Freeze is the pinnacle of someone who really kind of has a right to do it. Oh, yeah. Because, I mean, Ferris Boyle literally kicked him into it and caused him to change and stuff like that. That's where things get really that's where things go downhill really. oh, right. that's that's the point where you know his life is over and all he's got to live for is curing his wife doesn't care about curing himself and i'm pretty sure there's a later episode or it might have been a spin-off series when um nora I comes think, back I and sees what he's done to himself uh, yeah and she sees what he's done to himself and she can't she can't bear it do you know what i mean like yeah. she can't handle it and that's the thing that's the tragic story behind it no matter how far he goes he will always fail that's the tragic thing about it because his heart he, he's got good intentions and his heart he feels he's doing the right thing but the, the deep down all his wife wants is for him to be living his life and happy she can't say that to him because she's kind of you're welling up there um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not actually welling up I'm a total man <laughs> it's a manly thing to suck cock Mario <laughs> on that note <laughs> Yeah, so I think, we, I think we've talked about the gist there. Let's talk about things he's been in and how some things have morally fucked him up. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> Gotham. Mr. Freeze appeared in... Should we do it in the order that we know? The order that we know, so you know Batman and Robin. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Ar Arnold Schwarzenegger played Mr. Freeze, or did he, in uh, Batman and Robin. It was a very different take on Freeze. He shocking was, uh, movie, shocking. He was uh, hitting out with puns every time. He was He was a com I was going to say he's a comedic relief in the movie, but the entire thing was a comedic relief from life. <laughs> okay, it was. It wasn't. It wasn't even a serious Batman movie. Go fuck yourself, Batman and Robin. It wasn't that bad. No, I'm kidding. It was. It was. And I wish whoever made it could just fucking drown. 
Like it's it's that bad. Uh, and then it was followed up by was that was that that, that was ninety seven ninety eight I think. It, that, that was the last one, wasn't it? Yes. Uh, yes we had Poison Ivy and Bane prior yeah. to that, and <sighs> well, that was in the same movie. The the bat ass, bat nips, bat ass, bat crotch, bat ass, bat nips, and crotch and ass. Is there Beata. any fucking need? Is it aimed at children? And you've got a bat ass. Everything needs to have some sex appeal, right? You know, like that's probably one of the defining moments in my life. Uh, I got that box set at Christmas um, 2000, I believe, and I watched it to death because when I was younger, I didn't have a brain. Same here. I thought I went to see it in the cinema and I thought it was a good movie. But this is not a review of Batman and Robin James. Oh, no. That's we will get to that eventually with um, anticipation um, and regret. Gotham. Gotham. Uh, have you seen the Gotham story? In? Yes, I have. Terrible, but I just thought Not that great. it wasn't there, great. there wasn't compared it to what we saw here in Heart of Ice, nowhere near as much emotion or uh, dare I say I don't care. Yeah, it was very much like Freeze was it was a guy out to do basically everything he set out to do in this, but the thing that makes it striking in this is that he was just a normal guy before it and he was trying to do it the right way. And when that was taken from him, he turned to that crime. Gotham implies that they couldn't afford medicine, he was gonna freeze her, and then the story of at the end, spoilers, how Nora kills herself, yeah. basically, is an interesting twist, but then there's no reason for Freeze to be Freeze. You know, he's nothing to fight for by that point. And then Gotham went into this story about how Hugo Strange turned him into, like, well, a man that can live in sub-zero temperatures. Well, here's the thing. Gotham is not a Batman story to me. So, Mr. Freeze is just a... Like, a tidbit. A, a, not, like, not even a like shadow of the Mr. Freeze that we know. Same with Joker, Jerome, go fuck yourself, Gotham. S- same with every villain in it, to be honest. Uh, except Penguin and Riddler. Scarecrow's interesting because we've not seen him again. Finally, how the games portray him. Yes. The, I think the games, there was the there was the Batman game that was based on the animated series, which Freeze appeared in. A 2D? No, it was a, it was a 3D. It wasn't a great 3D, but it was good. Mm. No, you had Freeze was in it. It was basically just freeze for the animated series. Yeah. Of course, the main villain was Joker, and then you had mm, uh, of course, and then you had Arkham City and Arkham Knight, which you could kind of see happening within the realm of the animated series because you know same cast, same near enough everything. So you could see it happening in that realm. And Arkham City had the Nora story continuing, but Arkham Knight finished it through DLC. Yeah. Where uh, Nora is woken up by the Arkham Spoilers. Knight forces. Spoilers. Spoilers. The sad, tragic thing is Freeze gets pushed to a point where he has to destroy everything that could save Nora's life or save Nora at the time because she's in danger. And Freeze decides that he has to, you know, set off an EMP that will destroy all the Arkham Knight's forces within the vicinity, which he does. And then there's just this really sad scene of Nora just basically saying to him, look, I'm not spending my life with you trapped behind a glass door and some ice. Like, whatever's left in my life for as long as, as I want to spend it with you. And then they sail away. And that's it. You, it's not a happily ever after, but it's it's as close as you'll get. It's, it's as close as Freeze will get, and I think it was like I say, he's he's a character with such a quite a grounded story, so it's it's relatable to yeah. some people. People could believe it, you know. Um, and yeah, I think that Mister Freeze is definitely a character to watch. It is indeed uh, one of the most interesting characters in Batman. Like like you said, you've got Joker, who's chaotic, Two Face, who does have a sad story, but the most gripping and the down. most psychological. Yeah. Yeah, you know, the effect, he only does what he does because he cares about that one person. So psychologically, he has the most believable story out of all of Batman's villains. And him and Batman aren't too dissimilar because Freeze kind of thinks already that he's lost Nora, but he's trying his hardest to save her. In his eyes, he's the hero. Yeah, he doesn't go the right way about it, but that's how his story goes and he'll just keep trying and trying and maybe one day they'll write him a nice ending. (laughs) Yeah. Never. Oh, well, maybe. That episode, James, what do you rate it? Oh, definitely 10 out of 10. As a child, loved it. Watching it again as an adult and you understand the themes in it. Because uh, when you're a kid, you're just watching. You're I know, like, oh, just Batman's like, oh, fighting. yeah, Batman's punching him. Punch him. Pour your chicken soup on him. Da, Batman's fighting. Bah, da, da, Batman. Like, and when you're an adult, you kind of understand the themes and you're like, wow, this and is quite adult. I know. When you're, I it child, actually man. grips you and you're like, hold on, this is, this is for kids. I'm crying here. I'm a weeping mess. Yeah, <laughs> so I, mean, I think that's one of the things the animated series does so well is when you watch it again as an adult, it's a 22 it, year it's old. An a, it's an adult show, but just with uh, animation chucked in to bring the kind of age down just to go, hey, it's for kids, but it's really not look, for kids, look yeah. into it and it really, really gets you. 
Like Heart of Ice, I would have to go as high with it being a Emmy Award winning show, well episode. I would have to give it a good a good nine out of ten. Yes. So follow us on SoundCloud at Glaswegian Geeks. We are on iTunes. Search for us under Glaswegian Geeks. Rate, review, and subscribe. And you can find us on Twitter at Glaswegian Geeks, all one word. And search for us on Facebook at Glaswegian Geeks because we like continuity. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, you're do. about to hit out a shit army, weren't you? No, I wasn't. I was actually going to address the public, our adoring public. Oh, wait there. Okay. And on that note, guys, <laughs> you can't so <stall> now. <laughs> Ah, geek out, everybody. Ah, have, an, have an ice day. Ah, 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 ah.